Welcome to this lecture, we will discuss the probability of committing a type 2 error. This lecture is divided into two videos. In the first video, we will see how we can calculate the probability of a type 2 error of a one-sided test. Whereas in the second video, we will see how we can calculate the probability of a type 2 error of a two-sided test. We will also discuss the parameters that affects the type 2 error. Recall that the type 2 error is an error we make if we incorrectly do not reject a false null hypothesis. To explain the risk of committing a type 2 error, we'll here use the same example data from the lecture where we discussed a one sample t test. We have six individuals that have been on a diet for four weeks. The following numbers represent the weight change after these four weeks. Normally, we would use the following formula for the one sample t test to compute the t statistic in order to test if the mean change in weight, x bar, is different from mu zero, which is the value according to the null hypothesis. In our example, we set mu zero to zero, since this represents no change in the mean weight, which is what we expect if the diet has no effect according to the null hypothesis. However, Let's say that we happen to know the population standard deviation of the weight change, which in this example is known to be 1 kilo. Then we no longer need to estimate the standard deviation based on the sample. We can therefore run a so-called one sample set test instead, and use the standard normal distribution to compute the p-value. This will simplify our calculations. Note that the only difference between the two formulas is that we use the known population standard deviation in the z-test, whereas we estimate the standard deviation based on a sample for the t-test. Since we do not need to estimate the standard deviation in this example, we will not use the t-distribution. Instead, we will use the standard normal distribution to calculate the p-value. This is why it is called a z-test. The null hypothesis in this example states that the change in mean weight after the diet is either zero or greater than zero, whereas the alternative hypothesis states that the diet reduces the mean weight. As usual, we set the significance level to 5%. The average change in weight for the six individuals after the diet is negative 0.5, which means they have lost on average 0.5 kilos. We like to test if this change is significantly less than zero, which means that the value of mu zero is set to zero in this case. In this example, the population standard deviation is one and the sample size is six. If we plug in these values in the equation for the set statistic and do the math, we see that the set statistic is equal to negative 1.22. By using a software, the area to the left hand side of negative 1.22 in a standard normal distribution was computed to 0 0.11, which corresponds to our p-value. Note that we only use the left tail this time, since this is a one-sided z-test, where we like to test if the diet reduces the mean weight. Since the p-value is greater than our significance level of 0 0.05, we do not reject the null hypothesis. For a one-sided test, the value to the left of negative 1.64 covers 5% of the area in the standard normal distribution. We call this value the critical value, since it is a cutoff value which determines if we will reject or not reject the null hypothesis. To get a p-value that is less than our significance level of 0 0.05, our set statistic therefore has to be less than negative 1.64. Since our set statistic was not less than negative 1.64, we did therefore not reject the null hypothesis. However, what value of x bar would correspond to the set score of negative 1.64? If you saw this equation for the critical value of x bar, we'll get the following formula. Let's move the formula up here and plug in the values for mu zero the standard deviation and the sample size. 
we see that the critical value of x bar is calculated to about negative 0.67. Remember that the average weight change in our example was negative 0.5, which is greater than negative 0.67. This is the reason why we could not reject the null hypothesis. If the null hypothesis is true, then we expect that the sample means will have a normal distribution like this, where the sample means are spread around zero. The spread of the sample means is equal to the standard error. One standard deviation of the sample means is equal to the standard error, which is 1 divided by the square root of 6 in our example. This means that if we would repeat the experiment many times, with 6 new individuals every time, the mean differences in weight would be spread like this around 0 according to the null hypothesis, which states that the diet has no effect. If the sample mean is less than negative 0 0.67, we will reject the null hypothesis. Let's say that they think that the diet will reduce the body weight on average by 1 kilo. We can think of this as we have an alternative distribution of sample means that are centered around negative 1, assuming the same standard deviation as for the null distribution. Let's extend the line for the critical value of x bar so that it is also shown in alternative distribution of sample means. The area to the right hand side of negative 0 0.67 in the alternative distribution corresponds to the probability that we commit a type 2 error if the alternative distribution is true. In our example data, the sample mean was negative 0 0.5, which is greater than negative 0 0.67, which means that we did not reject the null hypothesis. Suppose that the alternative hypothesis was true, then we would have committed a type 2 error. The probability of making a type 2 error is the area to the right hand side of negative 0 0.67 in the alternative distribution. However, how do we calculate this area? We can use a software tool, such as R, to calculate the area at the right hand side of negative 0 0.67 in a normal distribution with the mean of negative 1 and the standard deviation of the sampling means, which corresponds to the standard error of the mean. The standard error of the mean is equal to the standard deviation divided by the square root of our sample size. In our example, the population standard deviation is 1 and the sample size is 6 which results in a standard error of 0 0.41. The standard deviation of the sample means is therefore 0 0.41. The mean of the alternative distribution is negative 1. For example, we can use the p-norm function in R to calculate the area to the right-hand side of negative 0 0.67 in a normal distribution with a mean of negative 1 and a standard deviation of 0 0.41. Note that we set the argument lower dot tail to false because we like to calculate the area of the upper tail. We see that this area is computed to about 0 0.21, which means that there is a 21% risk of committing a type 2 error. If we instead directly plug in the calculation of the critical x bar value, instead of rounding it to negative 0 0.67, we'll get the more accurate value for the probability of committing a type 2 error. So, based on what we have learned so far, we can formulate the probability of committing a type 2 error like this. The probability of committing a type 2 error is usually denoted by beta, which is equal to the probability that the z-score is greater than the difference between the critical x-bar value and the proposed value of the weight loss, divided by the standard error of the mean, which is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. If we plug in the values in the equation, 
we see that we should calculate the probability that the z-score is greater than 0.81 in a standard normal distribution. To calculate this, we use the software to compute the area at the right hand side of 0.81 in a standard normal distribution. We can again use the p-norm function in R, where we now set the mean to 0 and the standard deviation to 1 in order to use the standard normal distribution. The area to the right of 0.81 is computed to about 0.21, which corresponds to the probability of committing a type 2 error, given that the alternative hypothesis is true. Note that this is the same value as we calculated earlier when we used a normal distribution with a mean of negative 1 and a standard deviation of 0.41. The difference is that we have here normalized the value so that we can use the standard normal distribution instead. In conclusion, the probability that we commit a type 2 error is about 21% if the expected weight loss of the diet is 1 kilo given a standard deviation of 1 and a sample size of 6. To summarize what we have done so far, we first calculated the critical value for our sample mean, which corresponded to negative 0.67 for a one tape test with a significance level of 5%. Then we used that critical mean value in the following equation to calculate the normalized score so that we could use the standard normal distribution. However, we can combine these two equations by substituting the critical x bar term in the second equation by the following expression. So that we get the following equation. We can reformulate that equation like this. Let's also substitute the value 1.64 by the notation z alpha, which represents the critical value for a one-sided test for a certain significance level. Let's try this equation based on our old values for the suggested mean weight loss of 1 kilo versus no difference in weight based on a population standard deviation of 1 and a sample size of 6 and a critical z-score value of 1.64. If we plug in these values and do the math, we see that beta is equal to 0.21 just as before. To summarize what we have done so far, when we use a one-sided left tail test, where we test if the proposed mean is less than the mean according to the null hypothesis, the probability that we commit a type 2 error can be calculated by the following formula, which calculates the area at the right hand side of the critical mean value in the corresponding alternative distribution. The following equation is also commonly used, which calculates the same thing, but where we instead take 1 minus the area of the left hand side, which corresponds to the area of the right hand side. If we instead have a one sided right tail test, where we test if the proposed mean is greater than the mean according to the null hypothesis, we then calculate the area to the left hand side of the critical mean value in the alternative distribution because we will not reject the null hypothesis if our sample mean is less than 0.67 in this example. This area can be calculated by the following formula where we now calculate the probability that the z-score is less than the critical mean value in the alternative distribution. So this was the end of the first video. In the second video, we'll see how we can calculate the probability of a type 2 error for two-sided test. We'll also discuss which parameters that affect the type 2 error. See you in the second part.